Has there ever been a microphone that you looked at once and immediately knew you had to have it? It might sound a bit shallow to focus on the look of a microphone, but some microphones are absolutely gorgeous. And personally, that's how I felt about this Audix PDX720. This particular microphone is a signature edition, and actually, Audix was nice enough to send me this microphone over for review. But on top of that, they even put my channel's name on this microphone. I haven't ever had a company do that, and I thought that was really cool, but I do just want to let you know this isn't a sponsored review. I will be completely honest about how I feel about the PDX720. And speaking of honesty, one of the things I was a little surprised to find out was the price of this microphone. As of this review, it's going to be going for $799. We'll decide if this XLR dynamic microphone is worth that, but in typical Audix fashion, this is actually a hypercardioid microphone. There are some hypercardioid broadcast style microphones out there, but not too many. One big note on this microphone is that this is a big microphone. It weighs 869 grams, or about 2 pounds, and it's 212 millimeters in length, or about 8.3 inches. But in all reality, it's not that much bigger than an SM7B. In fact, it's nearly identical to the same length as an RE20, but has about the same girth as an SE Dynacaster. On a much smaller note, the list of things that come with this microphone is in fact a small list. Aside from a very nice box that you receive this in, pretty much what you see is what you get. You do get an attached mount that allows you to move this microphone up and down really easily, and the bottom section of the mount are actually very similar to the SM7B. The actual area where you thread it to a stand spins, so you don't have to just spin the microphone around the stand a bunch. And also that is right next to where you plug in your XLR cable. But what comes in this microphone and on this microphone is much more important than what comes with it. On the back side of this microphone, there is a little hidden area behind the Audix logo. That back plate is actually magnetic, and underneath that there are two three-position filter switches. Those filter switches, of course, include a flat version of the microphone, so a flat high end and a flat low end and also a 120 hertz high pass filter and a 155 hertz high pass filter. The whole beginning of this video has been base mode in flat with a 1.5 decibel presence boost. Now obviously filters like this are meant to change the tone of the microphone in a specific way, but I'll be sure to put the frequency response graph and polar pattern graph up on the screen right now. And in relation to those graphs, the frequency range of this microphone is 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has an output impedance of 280 ohms, a sensitivity of 1.9 millivolts per pascal, a max SPL of greater than 135 decibels, and as mentioned previously, this is a dynamic microphone with a hypercardioid polar pattern. One interesting thing about this microphone is regardless of whether you have this on a traditional stand or a desktop boom arm, you can actually make it so the logo is right side up. But let's go ahead and do some common microphone tests, and after that I will actually do a small little comparison. Now before I jump into these tests, I do just want to let you know that for a majority of this, I am going to be using the Rodecaster Pro 2. I won't have any processing on or anything like that, but those are the preamps that I'm using. But now we're testing my camera's autofocus at the same time as we're doing a distance test. Right now I'm three feet away. And if I get right up on top of the microphone, do a proximity effect test, here's how it sounds in flat mode. But just to show the range that this microphone can potentially have, when I'm right up on top of this microphone, here is with the 155 hertz plus three decibel presence boost enabled. And now here is the plus three decibel presence boost, but with the 120 hertz high pass filter. Now we have the plus 1.5 with the 120 hertz high pass filter. And now here is the 120 hertz high pass filter in flat mode up top. Now the presence mode is in flat and this is a 120 hertz high pass filter. And now we have the 155 hertz high pass filter enabled. Now this section is going to get a little bit loud. Let's test some plosives. Now this is in flat mode. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Now this is with the 120 hertz high pass filter enabled. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. 155 hertz high pass filter. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Now here is flat mode with the pop filter. 
Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Plosive test with some pickled peanutses. Now I've just turned on a compressor and a limiter, and I've just had this in flat mode right here. And now here's that same compressor and limiter, but with the plus three decibel boost on. And once again, here's that same compressor and limiter, but with the 1.5 decibel boost in the presence mode. Now one of my favorite ways to test a polar pattern is to do a white noise test. We're not doing that right now, but we're going to in a second. But right now, I'm just banging on a keyboard behind this microphone. Now for absolutely the most important test, a kitty purr test. Right now I'm in a very reverberant, untreated room, and here is how the Audix PDX720 handles it. Currently this microphone is in flat mode, and I will say there is like an AC unit on. This is a very not optimal recording situation. And now we do have that plus 1.5 presence boost enabled. And now we have that plus 3 decibel presence boost enabled. Now just for fun, just to see if it makes a difference, here is the 120 hertz high pass filter. And here is the 155 hertz high pass filter. Now one thing about this microphone is that it is labeled a professional dynamic vocal studio microphone. However, in the manual it says applications, vocals, voiceover, professional podcast, studio broadcast, studio recording, drum recording, instrument recording. Now with that being said, let's do some guitar tests. For this comparison, I will have a link in the description where you can go and download the raw audio if you want to check these microphones out at their highest quality. Before these, I'm just going to be going head to head. As you can tell right here, I have the Shure SM7B, a very popular broadcast style microphone versus the Audix PDX720. Now, one thing I want to mention is that the SM7B does go for about $400, which is half the price of the Audix PDX720. Currently the Audix is in flat mode versus the SM7B also in flat mode. The SM7B does have some filter switches, but I'm just going to be comparing the Audix filter switches versus the standard sound of the SM7B. Now the 1.5 decibel presence boost is enabled on the Audix versus the flat mode on the Shure SM7B. And now we have the three decibel boost on the Audix enabled. And in case anyone's going to complain about me not being close enough to the SM7B. I'll be a little bit closer to the SM7B against the Audix just 
for anyone who thinks I need to be closer to it. We'll test that out. And now I'm a little bit closer to the SM7B versus the flat mode of the Audix. So this comparison is a little bit different. The Audix is a dynamic mic, and right here, this is the Loughton Audio LS208. The reason this one's a little different is that the LS208 is actually a condenser microphone, but these mics do have some things in common. For instance, on the LS208, this does have two three-position switches, exactly the same as the Audix. I did want to let you know that the LS208 is actually the microphone in these comparisons that is the closest in price to the Audix. It usually goes for $598 versus the Audix $799. But the LS208 does go on sale quite often, and maybe the Audix will too, so I'll have links down in the description of like the best prices that you can get. But right now, the Audix is in flat mode, while the LS208's high-end switches actually are a little bit different. They're not presence boosts, they're actually cuts. So I'm going to put comparable modes against each other, and I'm not going to really worry about the high-pass filters with these microphones. But here's a real quick test between the Audix PDX720 versus the Loughton Audio LS208 in its 8 kilohertz low-pass filter mode. Now on the PDX720, I have the 1.5 decibel presence boost enabled, and on the Loughton Audio, I have the 10 kilohertz low-pass filter enabled. Now I have the 3 decibel boost enabled for the Audix PDX720 versus the Loughton Audio in its flat high-end mode, but it does have quite a bit of treble, so these should be relatively comparable. Now we have one of my favorite microphones of all time, the Electro Voice RE20, going up against the Audix PDX720. The RE20 does have a high pass filter on it, but we're not going to test that out. We're just going to test the presence modes on the PDX720 versus just kind of the more typical sound of the RE20. Now the Electro Voice RE20 goes for usually $449, but I'll of course have the most current price in the description versus of course the $800 of the Audix which you've heard me mention a couple times already. Now I have enabled the 1.5 decibel presence boost on the Audix and I know that these kind of seem like they you know might not be exactly the same distance away but I do measure them. I make sure that they are exactly the same angle, same distance. And now here's the plus three decibel presence boost of the Audix going up against the very loved sound of the RE20. Now we have the SE Dynacaster versus the Audix PDX720. Once again, here is another microphone that is pretty similar in a lot of ways to the Audix. Now even though these two microphones are similar to each other, the price is vastly different. The SC Dynacaster comes in at $289 usually, and the Audix comes in at $799. So we're talking a very big difference here. And also the SC Dynacaster is a cardioid microphone versus the hypercardioid microphone of the Audix. Much like the Audix, the SE Dynacaster has two switches that are three position. It offers a flat mode, of course, two different presence boosts, a bass boost mode, and a high pass filter. But there is one other thing that the Dynacaster does offer that the Audix does not, and that is a built-in microphone activator. And there is a switch on the back where you can enable that or disable that. But here are both microphones in flat mode. Since the SE Dynacaster comes with the bass boost enabled, I'm going to go ahead and enable it for the rest of the tests. So now we have the SE Dynacaster with the bass boost on in the treble and flat mode versus the Audix in completely flat mode. Now the SE Dynacaster has its first presence boost enabled and the bass boost enabled versus the 1.5 decibel presence boost and the flat low end on the Audix. Now we have the Dynacaster's biggest presence boost versus the Audix biggest presence boost, the plus three decibels presence boost. Now I wanted to put a little bit more of a budget option in this video, so I put in the Shure MV7X. But here's just a real quick back and forth of a $179 microphone versus an $800 microphone. Currently the Audix is in flat mode. Now the Audix has a 1.5 decibel presence boost versus the MV7X that is Purely what you see is what you get. You plug it in and that's the sound you have. Now we have the plus three decibel presence boost on the Audix versus the Shure MV7X. Now I'm going to jump into my review, my opinion of the Audix PDX720. Now I've got to say, I actually think the sound of this microphone is slightly refreshing in the sense that it is different 
than a lot of the other microphones that I have. It's kind of different than its competitors. Even with the three decibel presence boost enabled, it's not as bright as some of those microphones in that comparison, which in my opinion makes this microphone a little bit more versatile, versatile, because I think that most people that are going to spend $800 on a microphone are going to mold it. They're going to sculpt it. They're going to EQ it, put compression on it. Not saying it sounds bad. I'm just saying that the market this is aimed towards those people are going to, you know, tend to do some post-processing. But speaking of this microphone being versatile, I do think that those presence boosts are nice to have in a situation where maybe you don't have the opportunity to do a lot of post-processing and you just want like an out-of-the-box good spoken word sound. But personally, I think this microphone could be really good for a lot of instrumentation. I think it'd be a really solid studio microphone in general. You could put this microphone in front of a lot of different sound sources, have it capture the entire frequency range, and then you get to adjust it however you want. And in my opinion, adjusting and EQing a microphone like this is much easier in post than it would be if this microphone were super bass or treble heavy. So I definitely don't have a problem with the sound. You know I don't have a problem with the looks. I think this microphone is definitely very pretty. It's gorgeous. I do wish this microphone was a little bit smaller, but I'm fine with it. It's not that big of a deal. But the one thing when it comes to build that I do wish was different is being able to adjust the tension of this little mount. I think that would be really nice. And I'm actually kind of worried that over time it's gonna become really loose. And at this point in time, I'm actually not really sure how you tighten it. I'm sure there is a way though. Or maybe they found some magical way where it won't loosen up ever, which would be cool. So overall, I do like the sound. I like the build and the look of it. There are some tweaks there that I wouldn't mind. But the third thing, the price. I can't say that I love the price of this, but I can say I get it. With the build quality and the market this is aimed at, I understand $799. I do think closer to the Loughton LS208 around like $600 would be better. I feel like that would fit in the microphone market really well at that price point. But me saying that I think is kind of silly in a way because it's like, who doesn't want stuff less expensive? Who doesn't want that? But I feel like some people might look at this price point and be like, why would I buy that when I can get two SM7Bs or eight SM57s? But when it comes to audio gear, video gear, laptops, technology in general, just a lot of things, the law of diminishing returns is absolutely real. For instance, this isn't essentially twice as good as an RE20. It's the quality difference from a $20 mic to a $100 mic is pretty substantial. And then a $100 mic to a $200 mic is substantial but definitely less substantial but then from that point the quality improvement for the price is smaller and smaller so i'm just going to be like very obvious with this obvious as shit and shit is quite obvious if you're a person that's looking for a microphone and you have at least an 800 dollars budget and you love the sound of this microphone then get it for someone that wants good quality audio for singing podcasting youtube instruments. You could get a microphone for substantially less than this that's going to be good enough. That doesn't mean we knock the PDX720, it just means that this isn't for everyone. So I'm going to pull the BBSR up and give you my grade with the Audix PDX720 coming in at $800. I'm going to give this microphone a 7. And the reason that I'm giving this a 7 is that I do think this is good and definitely worth buying if you have the budget and you want a microphone like this. And I guess I would say that at essentially any price point, but definitely in this instance. But once again, I do want to thank Audix for sending this microphone over and letting me do an honest review of it. And to all of you that are watching and subscribed, I really appreciate you. I hope that this video helped you out. And I do want to give the biggest thank you to all the lovely members of the audio hotline. And I'll see all of you audio nerds next time.